Wednesday, October 17th, right here in this room at 7.30, this Chinese pastor who grew up in abject poverty, his brother died of starvation, he became a follower of Jesus, and as a result of that he was seriously, horribly persecuted. Uh, he eventually escaped from prison, and he's, uh, even in the midst of all that pain and suffering, he has had incredible encounters with God. And so he's coming to share some of those with us and release more of the kingdom to us. Three. So that's exciting. I also wanted to mention that third Sunday of October, of October, which is our potluck Sunday, we also have another feast happening. We have Joanna Adams with us. And Joanna is an amazing, mighty woman of God who is used in a whole bunch of different ways, the prophetic, but especially uh, deliverance. And so if you, if you have some excess baggage that you want to get rid of, you know, come along that Sunday and she will help us get rid of some of that. Amen? Okay, one of the things that John and Carol were the founding pastors of Cash and Fire, one of the things they were sharing with us at the conference to everybody there was um, essentially how they, what God was asking of them, because they were hungry for God, they were hungry for more of God, more of the Holy Spirit. So let me just say this quickly to clarify something. Once you become a believer in Jesus, the Father comes in, the Holy, Jesus comes in into your life, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. And they come not in measure, they come in their fullness. So when we talk about more of the Holy Spirit, we're not, talk, we're not talking, you know, theologically that there's more of the person of God to come into our lives. We're talking more about the influence of God in our lives. We're hungry for us to become more like Jesus. And so we're always crying out, more Lord, more, more of you. We want to encounter more of you. We want to experience more of you. There's more of you to be experienced. When I got married to my awesome wife uh, a number of years ago now, uh, we committed ourselves fully to each other. But in the inter intervening period, we have been spending time discovering more of each other and influencing more of each other in our thoughts, in our attitudes. I'm being helped to know how to love people more. All right? So that's essentially what I'm talking about when we talk about more of God. We want, we want God to be resident in us. We want our faces, as it were, to shine the glory of God on our faces like a different were on Moses. Although his glory is fading, and the glory that we have access to is not fading, it's the opposite of fading. It's only meant to go from glory to glory, greater and greater. Alright? That's what we're after. That's what we're pursuing. So John and Carol were hungry for God, and the Lord said to them, I want you to do two things. I want you to give your mornings to me. They were pastors, so I want you to give your mornings to me. So what they did was they cleared their schedules for I think maybe about a year before God showed up. They, they instead of having appointments, appointments with, with, with you know, normal counseling appointments and everything else, they would just give their mornings to devotion, to prayer, reading the Bible, listening to messages, just giving their mornings to a time of intimacy with God. God was their, was their priority in every way. Time, resources, energy, everything was focused on God. The second thing God asked them to do, commanded them to do, was uh, hang around anointed people. The kind of anointing that you want in your life, you go hang around those people. And so they did. They traveled to different parts of the world, and most of you probably know the story. They ended up going to uh, Argentina, and this Revivalist Claudio Friesen, Friesen, who was a, a pastor in, in Buenos Aires, he, uh, he this church was like exploding with growth and uh, signs and wonders and miracles were happening. And the kinds of things that John and Carol were hungering for were actually being uh, displayed there. So they go to this man's church and he's praying for a bunch of foreign, uh, the, the, the visitors and. Um, uh, you know, he prays with Carol, Carol gets easily, Carol's a lightning rod, so she's easily touched by the Holy Spirit, and she flies backwards. 
and then he prays for John, and John does a courtesy drop. He doesn't know, he doesn't know if anything really happened. He just went to the ground, and then the Claudio walked on. But then he turned back to John and pointed at, at him and said, Do you really want it? And, and in that moment, John had a revelation, which I got this past, this last few days, when John was recounting his story. Uh, in that moment, John realized that he can't be passive about this. Yes, God is sovereign and God wants to bless us, but he's always looking for people who are hungry. And he's going to pour out over people who are hungry. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so John realized, I just can't say, God, yes, I'm here. Can you just bless me? I'm the little one, you're the big one. You come and bless me. John had to engage his faith and say, yes, Claudio, I want this. So when Claudio says, do you want this? John says, yes. And something happened. He, he got hit. There's, not, there's nothing that physically or sensory that happened to him. But when he came back to Toronto, the stuff that he was longing to see happen, people getting healed when he prays for them, God showing up in, in the room, the glory of God present in the room, began to manifest itself. So that was instructive for me, and that's what I want us to catch hold of this morning. That when we pray for people, or even now, begin to stir your heart, that when we get to the, to the time of the meeting, in half an hour or so, when we uh, begin to pray for you, uh, say, yes, God. I'm not, just, I'm, not going to, I'm, I'm not going to be passive about this. I'm going to engage with you, and I'm going to want what, you, what you're pouring out uh, this morning. Okay? So, great! Everybody excited and ready to go? She got boom, boom. I need my glasses, I suppose, if I'm going to pay attention to my notes. One of the things that Jesus said, one of his main messages when he arrived on, on, on planet Earth, or when he was baptized and empowered by the Spirit to begin his ministry, what was the first, first thing that he said to people who were paying attention? What did he say? What was his message? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is within reach. It's no longer far off. No longer restricted to certain holy people. It's right here in our midst. The kingdom of heaven, he goes on to say, is in our midst. Right? People say, think in the English language, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So that makes it very individualistic. It's within you. And that's true. The kingdom of heaven is within you. But also, that's a, that you is actually a plural word. So the kingdom of heaven is among you. It's as we are the people of God together that we get to see the kingdom of God manifested in, in increasing fullness. So the kingdom of heaven is among you. And one of the evidences, there are many ways the kingdom of heaven is, is evidence, is, there's proof that the kingdom is at hand. One of the ways is this one. John chapter 10, verse 37 to 39. Do not believe me, Jesus says, to the people, to the Pharisees uh, listening to him, do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Again, they tried to, to seize him, but he escaped their grounds. So the point is that the, the, one of the ways the kingdom of God is manifested is when we see the works of the kingdom. When we see people being healed, when we, view, when we see people being set free, when they're being touched by the love of God, when they're being transformed by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Amen? Another way that Jesus says that we will see the kingdom of heaven at hand is found in John chapter 17, verses 20 to 24. Now, I'll read it for you. This is, John, uh, uh, this is Jesus uh, praying in his last uh, priestly prayer. John chapter 17, uh, starting at verse 20. John 17, verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone, meaning the twelve, 
My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. How many of you will believe in Jesus through the message of the apostles? That they all may be one, Father, just as you and I, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I am them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity, that the world may then the world may know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. What an incredible statement to make, that the world may know that you sent me by the unity that we exhibit, and that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Does it blow anybody's mind that Jesus is saying in this, in this verse that the same love that exists between the Father and the Son, that eternal love that existed before the creation of the world, that love that existed in the, in the, in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that love that exists between the Father and the Son is the same sort of love that the Father loves you and loves me with. The same way that the Father loves Jesus is the way that He loves you. That alone should blow our sockets. Because we know who we are. We know how unlovable we can be. But God loves us like He loves Jesus. You know, you go into a store and you see a nice, beautiful dress, ladies, and you want to buy this dress. And the dress costs a thousand dollars. Just keeping it on the cheap side. A thousand dollars for this dress. And you like this dress so much that you're willing to pay a thousand dollars for it. Right? You're willing to pay a thousand dollars. So your value, the value of that dress for you is a thousand dollars. And Jesus saw you. Gloria, Jesus saw you, and the Father saw you, Gloria, and he says, you know, Gloria, you are worth the life of my precious son, Jesus. That's the only value that you have to me, that, that, you, that you have to me, Gloria. Even way, even way, God says, oh my God, look at way. <laughs> Come on. If we were to grab this sort of revelation deep in our hearts, and I know it'll take an eternity, it'll take the Holy Spirit revealing that to us and teaching that to us because He's really the agent who brings all the good stuff of the kingdom that Jesus died on the cross to make available to us. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings those things to us. It says in Romans 5.5 5, 5, Romans 5, 5, that the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He's the one who brings these things to us. So there's great value in wanting to encounter the Holy Spirit. He brings all the good stuff. You can switch that off. Well, I'm not going to use this anymore. Ah, so real communities of loving people is the way that we will demonstrate that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? The unity. You know, I wish the church, and we all wish that the church was more united, less divided, less, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, yeah. Fractured, thank you, that's the word. Fractured. We all wish that. I only have, as a leader in the body of Christ, I really only have purview over this group of people called Cashapire Scarborough. My continual desire and longing for us, brothers and sisters, is that we would know how to live in love, in biblical love. You've heard me talk about that already. Uh, my desire, my deepest desire, is that we would know and, and experience what it's like to live in biblical love on an ongoing way, living in, in, at a measure of unity that is 
not common to the Kiwanis Club or to the Lions Club or any other club, but only to the Kingdom of God, only to the Body of Christ, only to the Church of Jesus Christ. Because the Spirit of God is there. The one who, who keeps, who, we're told, we're commanded by Paul in Ephesians to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And our, and the, and our prayer as a leadership team is that we would, we would learn how to live in love. And the main reason for that, there are many reasons for it, the primary reason is that we would experience more of God, the reality of God in our lives. But also, as Jesus is saying, that the world may know that, that the Father has sent me when they see the love that exists among us. Right? How will the world know that Jesus is real unless they see a manifestation of it in a community of people who are learning to love each other, to grow together, to look out for each other, to esteem each other more highly than, than we do ourselves. That's what, that's what, that's, that's a, a part of what it means to have the kingdom of God being manifested in our midst. Am I right? Bill Johnson has this really cool statement, and he has tons of really awesome statements. And one of the statements I love that he says is that our destination is heaven. Our destination is heaven. Georgia, you're getting ready. Come on. Don't go too soon. It'll be right now, later on. Our destination is heaven, but our assignment is to bring heaven to earth. When we die, when we all eventually die, we'll be in heaven with, with the Father and with, the, with a cloud of witnesses and angels and everybody else. And it'll be an awesome thing when there's a marriage of heaven and earth and we get to live in that paradisical, sort of amazing place. That's, that's down the road, right? That's our destination. But our assignment, while, while we're still here, our assignment is to bring heaven. To bring the realm of, of Jesus, the, the rulership of Jesus, into the place where we are. That's our assignment to bring heaven to earth, isn't it? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just in some, in some cataclysmic end time event, but now, today, on a daily basis. Yeah. Jesus talked of the greatest prayer daily. Give us today our daily bread. Every day we have to be praying, Lord, let your kingdom come where I am. Come on. Let your will be done where I am. Come on. Mm. Finish the juice, guys. So here's the deal. Here's the deal for, for us in this room right now. The most profound way, the most fundamental way that God, Jesus, is bringing his kingdom to earth today, because he's already done his part, right? Mm -hmm. He died, he suffered, died, was buried, rose again from the dead, ascended to heaven, and then 50 days after, on the glorious day of Pentecost, he released the Holy Spirit. So now, He's recruiting you and me to bring, to extend His kingdom. He's recruiting you and me to extend His kingdom. And like you've heard me say a million times, I love the fact that whenever God tells us to do something, two things. He always comes with us Behold, I'm with you always to the end of, end of the age. And he, he comes with us, but he also empowers us yes. to do what he's asking us to do. Isn't it? Yes, yes. And so he said to uh, the disciples in, in Luke chapter 9, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to, and to cure diseases. 
and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That's Luke chapter 9, verse, uh, verses 1 and 2. Very truly I tell you, John chapter 14, verse 12. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father. Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. It's within reach. You can touch it. It's right there. He says, the kingdom of heaven is, has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Isn't that awesome? And when it says that Jesus gave us power, the Greek word there is dunamis, and I know many people would say, you know, they would say he gave us, he gave us dunamis, he gave us dynamite power, because the word dynamite comes from the Greek word dunamis. And, you know, that's a, there's a better way to think about it. Because when Paul was writing, and when the New Testament was being written, right, dynamite wasn't, wasn't uh, in existence until the 14th century in China. So when Paul and, and Matthew and Mark, when they were writing about dunamis, they, they, they did not have it in mind, dynamite. Okay? There's another word that comes from the word dunamis in English, and the Greek word dunamis is an English word, and that word is dynamic. Dynamic. Dynamic means change. Change. Transformation. When, when we have the power of God in us, we have the power to change. We have the power to be transformed. We have the power to transform the surroundings around us. And that's what dunamis is actually all about. The ability, God-given ability, the empowerment of God by His Spirit to bring change in our own lives and to bring change around us. So if there's someone who's sick, we can change your circumstances by praying for them and God will touch them and heal them. If somebody is oppressed with demons, we can cast those demons out in the name of Jesus and that person will have a change in their life. That's what we're going after, right? And that's why we need the anointing. That's why we need the anointing. The anointing, the anointing is simply uh, the empowerment of God. Simply put, it's the empowerment of God to do what He's called us to do. Whether it's to live a righteous life before Him, or whether it's to do ministry in the power of the Spirit, in the gifts of the Spirit. The anointing is there for, at hand for us to do this. Alright? And so on uh, yesterday, yesterday at the morning service, uh, John and Carol went around praying for people to be uh, imparting a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. And so we went, even though we've been, we've done this 110 times, we went yet again because we're hungry for more. We know there's always more to be had, always, always more to be experienced. And so we did that, we went there, and even though something uh, sort of bad happened with Elsie well, when she fell, we nevertheless, we received by faith. We said, yes, I want this. Yes, there was a period of time when I would just go there passively. You know, people are praying for you, bam, bam, you should take it. And, but, but, but yesterday, I said, yes, I'm taking this fresh new anointing of God. Because there's so much more. I mean, I want it for myself, obviously, but there's so much more that we need to accomplish. As the body, we just talked about praying for Scarborough. We happen to be um, at the... At the um, emergency at the hospital yesterday and the paramedic was we were chit-chatting with her as we were waiting and she said she she's not a believer but she was talking about the rise of violence in this city and we have the solution come on we can look to the government and we can have a hundred million programs but we have the solution we have solution in prayer God, God, God will lead us to do things in the community to make a difference. We can partner with other churches, but we are the solution. Amen. 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 
So, here's what I want us to do. It's already 18 minutes. Any, anything else juicy I need to share with you? Yes, one more thought. As we talk about anointing, as we talk about anointing, I'm trying to explain anointing simply the empowerment, right? And in the Old Testament, one of the ways that they did it, in fact, the key way that they did it was that the, some religious leader, like a prophet, would come along and they would lather the person being anointed with oil. Alright, oil. Remember the story, for example, of Samuel, the prophet Samuel anointing David, and before that anointing Saul as king. So here's my question. Uh, who's anointing? If you guys already know the answer, because you've been on Scarborough for a while, just uh, give some of us a chance. If, uh, if you have the choice of having Saul, King Saul's anointing, or David's anointing, King David's anointing, which anointing would you rather have? <laughs> George, I've said not to answer. You know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of meant to be a trick question, because some people who want, you know, haven't heard this before would say, I want David's anointing, because he was the greater, better king. But the simple reality is that both anointings are the same. It's the same prophet, same oil, same amount being poured over them. So the, the issue then is not just about anointing, it's actually what you do with the anointing. Come on. And at Cash of Fire, we love the anointing, obviously, we love the Holy Spirit, we love, we love what He does, we love the gifts of the Spirit, but we also make a, a, a equivalent room a noise about having, how being able to house the anointing by having the right sort of character to carry the anointing. How many people, not a show of hands, but how, how many people, I can list five people right off the bat right now that come to mind who have been incredibly anointed of God. Powerful ministries, global reaching ministries who have fallen by the wayside because their character was not, did not match up with the anointing and the platform that they were given. We don't want to do it. We want to be able to finish well. We want to finish well. We want to be able to finish well. So, we, we say anointing and gifts, yes. But fruit and character, yes, as well. Amen? We've had, you know, Elsa and I have been in the airport church since the early days. And we've seen thousands, we've seen, we've seen millions of people come through those doors. We've seen thousands of people powerfully touched and impacted by the Holy Spirit and their ministries and their lives just exploded and took off and you know with Heidi Bakers, uh, Bill Johnson's, Cheon, all the people that we, that we, that we know and love. Incredible ministries have flourished from what God did by the Spirit in their lives. But we also know lots of people who have the same touch, same anointing, same empowerment of the Spirit some of, them, some of them aren't even walking with Jesus today. So we love the anointing, we love the anointing, we give our, we give our lives to the anointing, sort of. But we want to make sure that our hearts are also healed. And that's an ongoing process, it's not a one-time thing, it's an ongoing process of making sure that our hearts have the capacity to receive and to keep what God is doing in our throat. Amen? Amen? So what I want us to do now is just simply, <laughs> since Elsie and I and Kayan and Rachel were at the conference for most of it, and we've been receiving, what I, and I know I'm bristling with this stuff, man, so just a quick word about manifestations, because, you know, in the early days, all right, when, when God was coming and was pouring out so powerfully, and it was just incredible and beyond comprehension. And the, and the phenomenon was so amazing. People laughing and crying. The first day I went into that church back in 1995, December of 95, the lady standing next to me, I was standing in line, this was all brand new to me, totally brand new to me. Come from good, my Krishna, Krishna experience was at that time a very solid, evangelical, you know, missionary, bible -y kind of a guy. My, the my, the my, my trinity was Father, Son, and Holy Bible. And this lady 
on, on my left. She had long black hair down to her waist. And she began to just do this. As she's waiting for prayer, she began to just do this. And I kid you not, people, she began to move so fast that her hair was whipped like, like, like a whip. <laughs> her hair, her long hair, she pushes. That is not, that's not human. That's supernatural stuff happening. So freaky stuff. So, so the, the danger is that we end up thinking that those manifestations um, are always the evidence of God's work. Because yes, it could be, but also people can receive quite, without any sensory sort of stuff happening. And it's all by faith, isn't it? It's by faith. So here's what we want. We want, we want to pray for whoever wants a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit to help us extend the kingdom of God in your own lives, wherever you are. By the way, the anointing is not just for ministry. The anointing is to help you live your life. Because right? if you want to live, if you want to live a life that God is calling you to live, it will take His empowerment. If you're able to live your life without the anointing of God, you're really not living, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a full-on Holy Spirit, Jesus, radical life for Jesus. The life He's calling us to live is a life that requires His empowerment. So if you want to come and receive a fresh touch, please come to the front and just make a line across the front. And Austin will direct people and help them know how to stand. Anybody who's new.